And it turns out I can't quite do exactly what I wanted to, at least the way I had things set up. We're going to continue on our journey of building a Blazor web app. And where we left off before was leveraging Quartz to try and do job scheduling. And where this gets interesting is that we have this plugin system that we need to interface with this job scheduler. But the API that we started to spec out isn't really going to fit anymore. And that's because instead of having one big job that's going to do all of the plugins, it's looking like it's going to be a better fit to have one job per plugin that we want to support. So if you're just jumping into this series, you can check out the previous video right here. And where we're trying to head with this now is come up with a new API spec for getting our job scheduling to work with our plugins. We're getting really close to the point where we can start getting data from the internet and putting it into a database. So it's going to be very interesting to see where we get to. Now, before I head over to the code, just a quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my newsletter and courses that I'm working on. All right, let's check out some code. So where we left off was coming up with this idea that we'd have something like this interface that I have highlighted here from line 52 to 60. And the idea with this plugin interface is that each plugin could provide some type of mechanism to have information about the different types of jobs that they would need. Now that started to look like some unique job identifier, and this is not per instance of the job, it's really to identify the type of job. So that was important. So we have this job type ID, and we were saying that the job type, this literal .NET type here is probably not a good fit. But how this was being leveraged, if you watch the previous video, was that we were using dependency injection to resolve the implementation of the job. And then we also had this interval. But where I really wanted to focus on in this video is this dependency resolution because the implementation of the job being in the plugin is still a little bit weird. And the reason that it's weird is that it requires that each plugin has a dependency on Quartz. I would really like for the core application to have the dependency and have the plugins be agnostic to that. I'd like them just to have an implementation of the work they need to have done. And then the core application is really the one that's aware of Quartz being the scheduler. So let's go have a look at what we might need to change to make that happen. We had this Twitter job that we started to spec out, and my opinion was that we probably need to go back towards having more of a generic approach here. And the generic approach really comes down to the fact that when we go to execute the job, we have to do some type of fetching with the internet, and then we have to be able to not write hello world, but instead put this content into a database that we haven't come up with the schema for yet. So I would like to personally try and transform this job into something that's generic. And then what we can do is when we construct this, we can pass in the necessary information from the plugin that really is going to have something like the data fetcher. So we can pass that in kind of like this parameter right here. And then we can also, when we get to having entity framework pass in the context creation and sort of the access pattern for getting to write that data out to the database. All right, so all that I've done to start with is basically rename all of the stuff from the Twitter job to be just this generic fetching job. And you'll also notice if I correct myself here, I want to pass in iSocial data fetcher instead of a Twitter one specifically. And that means what we're going to not do is register this type of class on the dependency injection framework, and we're not going to register this one either. What we are going to do is make sure that we have some type of provider that's in the plugin itself, so one for Twitter, where we can say, hey, Twitter, what's your social data fetcher? Give us the instance of that. And then what we can do is take that instance and create a new fetching job. With that fetching job instance, we can add that into Quartz. So if I scroll back up to this interface that we were looking at before, instead of using this job type, Recall that this job type was really just here to be able to do the dependency uh, injection, the resolution to get that particular implementation of the job type. I'm instead just going to ask for a social data fetcher. And what we need to do at this point is go make the Twitter implementation of this. Because when we do that, we can ask all of the plugins, give us all of your social job providers. Then for each one of those, we can say, what's your unique job type ID? Because if I scroll back up, you can see that we need something unique per job, and we're going to use that in here as well and just append trigger on the end. This is just to start off. And then instead of using this add job like this, we're going to have to register that job in a different way. But we're going to create that job instance, just like we saw below with that new class, just the renaming we did, 
and pass in the instance of the data fetcher. From here, what I'd like to do is start thinking about how we can register the Twitter dependencies and get one of these social job providers set up specifically for Twitter. So to start, what I'm going to do is just go make a generic implementation of this because I think that I can just leverage it sort of like a container, a DTO of sorts. And then that way we might not even need the interface itself. I can literally just have a DTO and simplify it. All right, so with the interface gone, I just have this new record instead. It's literally the same type of thing, just not an interface. It's going to be a sealed record that we can reuse. All right, and then when it comes to dependency resolution, full disclosure, I come from using Autofac for many, many years. I'm not very used to using the built-in .NET dependency injection framework, so this is probably going to evolve as we go through this, but I'm learning with you here. So what I've done is just change this registration that we used to have right at this point, that instead of having the Twitter job, which I need to go delete now, I'm creating a new instance of a social job provider. I'm going to give it this unique ID for Twitter. It's just going to be a string for now. I don't think we need anything more intense than that at this moment. Then what I'm going to do is resolve this Twitter data data fetcher that I've registered up here. And that's going to be our iSocial data fetcher that gets passed into this DTO. And then I've just said that we're going to go run this every hour. I have no idea what this interval needs to be for now. And to be completely honest, we may find that later on, we don't want each plugin to be able to be configurable this way. Maybe the core application should be responsible for this, but we don't know yet. This is the very first plugin that we're going through to try and implement. And that's something that I want to call out with plugin architectures is that you may not know early on. I didn't do a ton of upfront design for this. I haven't specced out a ton of different things because I'm not working with a lot of different people. I'm just kind of doing this fluidly and feeling it out. And if I don't get to a point where I have 50 plugins, if I have to pivot and change the API, it really shouldn't be so hard. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting because I am used to Autofac and not the built-in .NET dependency injection framework. So what I would like to do at this point is replace this pattern here. Instead of creating a Twitter one specifically, what I would like to do is go ask for all of the social job providers that we have up here. Right now, there's only one, of course, but I would ask for each one of them, iterate through them, and then from there, go add them into Quartz. And it turns out I can't quite do exactly what I wanted to, at least the way I had things set up. I had to take a little bit of a break to go figure it out because doing it on camera was just too ridiculous. So here's what I ended up with. The first problem, and this is again just because I'm new to the .NET dependency injection framework coming from Autofac, and I'm trying to practice with this a little bit more as we go build this Blazor app. Now in here, this is where I wanted to try and do the job registration. But the problem with that was that our dependency container is not yet fully configured. So what I was attempting to do was try and resolve the dependencies that we have up here within this method, but they're not ready yet. So asking for them was yielding nothing that I wanted, and it was blowing up pretty fast. So that was the first challenge. And the second challenge is that the way that we registered jobs inside of Quartz does not work the way that I wanted to. Jobs inside of Quartz must be resolved through dependency injection, and that means that I can't easily compose them. Fortunately, I found a stack overflow answer, thank God, because I was totally puzzled as to how I would do this. Now, I would think that they would just offer you some option to be able to compose one on the fly. It's just not the case. Now, what we are able to do is make a generic one, and then we can resolve parameters in a different way. So let's go check out all the changes that I made and prove that we have this working now because it's really exciting. So the first part, like I mentioned, is that I moved the code that was trying to schedule the jobs from here, from line 24 to 27, down to a lower part in the code. So if I scroll down a little bit lower, you can see right before we start the application, which is right here on line 80, right before we go to do that, what I'm doing instead is doing all of the registration. This is what I tried to write above. Now, it's going to be a little bit complicated and it's changed a little bit from what we saw earlier, but let me explain what's going on. The first thing is that we need to resolve the scheduler factory from Quartz. This is one of the services that gets put onto the dependency injection framework from the methods that we called above. Once we have the scheduler factory, we can ask to go create the scheduler. And we get this Quartz instance here that allows us to go do the scheduling work. 
The next part, and this is what I was trying to do with the dependency injection framework, is that I want to go ask for all of the social job providers. With Autofac, the way that I'm normally able to do this is that if I ask for dependencies during registration, it figures out the right way to order them such that when I go to ask for them, it says, oh, I have to go get the prerequisites. Let me go figure that out first. In this particular case, I didn't quite have that luxury. So what we're doing is doing all of this work later on after we've created the app, but before we've started it. So we get this collection of all of these social job providers, which right now is just the Twitter implementation that we have. Or said more clearly, it's sort of this DTO that we have where I passed in the Twitter data. Now, what we do is we make the job key, and this comes right off of the provider. So the job type ID is going to be just Twitter in this case, a nice simple string. And we can see that this job builder had to take in this type here. And I'm going to show in just a moment how I had to alter this fetching job because we can't pass in the data fetcher through the constructor anymore. And that's because we can't provide parameters from specific places on the constructor this way. But what we do have access to is this job data map. And this job data map is effectively like mapping parameters into the job. It's just that they're not through the constructor. So it feels a little bit clunky to me. But what's really cool about this is that we only put it in one spot. So this is a common thing that I come across when I'm building framework type things where sometimes some of the code, it's ugly. It sucks and I don't like it. But it's in one spot and that means that to go extend this, to go add more plugins, all of those locations become nice and clean. And the trade-off is that I have one spot where I don't like looking at it and I can live with that. So again, we'll see this in just a moment on the consuming side, but then we end up adding the ID, which is just the job key we added above. And then we create the trigger very much like we did before. So we get the job type ID and tack dash trigger onto the end of it. And then from there, we just ask to schedule the job. This is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and it's what I was hoping it would look like, except for this part's a little bit gross, and where we're running this is a little bit later than I expected. But overall, it's still before the application starts up, which is pretty cool. And I think that if we needed to do something later where we want to dynamically drop in plugins instead of having to kill off the whole app, I think we could come up with something pretty cool later on if we need to. Now, the thing that I had to go change with respect to the job is the parameter passing through the constructor. That had to go away. You can see that this class now has no constructor at all. It's just the default one that's built in. And instead, the way that we get parameters passed in is through this merged job data map. And what I'm able to do is just ask for a parameter by a name. So I have the, I'm just using the name of the interface. I didn't want to come up with a, a very intricate key mapping right now. I'm not very creative that way. So if we need to do something more, we will later. I figure just asking for the name based on the interface that we're looking for makes it kind of obvious when we go to read it. So I ask for this uh, iSocial data fetcher, and then I'm just using a debug assert because right now as I'm exploring this, I want this kind of stuff to blow up early if uh, it's not working as I expect. Now, I'm not calling the social data fetcher because we haven't gone and fully implemented what we need for Twitter with respect to the API keys and secrets. But if we put hello world right here and I go run this, we'll see that we get it printed out. Let's go try it. Before I show you the output, I just wanted to show you that as we're debugging this, you can see that it's enumerating and getting the social job providers. So this is me stepping through and having it create the one for Twitter. So it goes ahead and schedules the job. Now I'm just gonna press F5 and we'll see the output saying hello world in the console. And as you can see, we've gone into the fetching job and we hit the console right line. So all is well. This is where we will later on go change this part to not say hello world, but instead we'll have this uncommented. And what we need to do next is figure out how we're going to write this data through Entity Framework. And I think that's a good spot for us to pause and think about what's going to come up in the next episode of this series. So now at this point, we have a pretty basic implementation for an API of plugins that we could work with. We can see that we can register jobs from something like Twitter, and we'll see if it's going to apply well to the other plugins as we start to go do them. So that's why we're keeping it nice and lightweight for now. 
but we have a plugin API that lets us create jobs dynamically. So that's pretty cool. We have this concept of a social media data fetcher that we can go implement. And again, the API for that might have to change as we explore, but I think we're at this cool turning point where we can start to say, awesome, let's go pull data from the internet. And what do we want to do with it? And I think in the next episode, what we should look at is trying to model some entity framework. Let's go see in the next video if we can start to write this data out to a database. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. Take care.